So this is the Fairview Lawn Cemetery in Halifax. Uh, this has the most concentration of people buried from the Titanic, actually the biggest concentration in the world, uh, at 121. There are two other cemeteries in Halifax that have a total of 29 others buried in. But this is the main one that people really come to see. So what happened was White Star paid for a plot of land here in this cemetery. And they paid for this size tombstone to be laid out here. Now there are some more elaborate tombstones, some bigger ones, more decoration and things like that. And it's mainly assumed that the family or friends paid extra money to have that done for certain people. Now the interesting thing is sometimes you'll get um, a name, Frank Couch, died April 15th, 1912. There's always a number, and what that number represents is the number and order of when they were found in the ocean. So you could see 83, 253, R.C. Bristow, 290, C.F. Bailey, 161. So there were a lot of victims who were never identified and probably never will be. Uh, for that situation, the tombstones just say died April 15, 1912, and the number that they were found, the number and order that they were found. Um, there's quite a, quite a lot of these, unfortunately. Uh, a very interesting thing is... So Sidney Leslie Goodwin is probably the most famous baby ever to come out of the whole Titanic story. So this is the grave of the unknown child. Sidney Leslie Goodwin was pulled from the first ship that came to help recover the bodies. And um, this grave was actually paid for by the crew of that ship. They pulled this baby right from the water. But the story doesn't end there. In 2007 or 2008, um, his DNA was positively identified to be Sidney Leslie Goodwin. At first, he was an unknown child, and once they were able to do that, they were able to figure out who he was and his family. Unfortunately, they all perished on the Titanic, but at least they know where he came from and who, who he was. In fact, the museum in Halifax uh, has a pair of shoes that helped identify him, which I'll be checking that out at some point too. Now there's one grave that's probably the most famous or most popular in this cemetery, and that's this one right here, Jay Dawson. Now probably there's a misconception that Jay Dawson was Jack Dawson, who Leonardo DiCaprio played, uh, but in reality that was Jonathan Dawson, and he worked in the engine room, uh, or the boiler room. This man, John Law Hume, was the famous violinist who continued to play as the ship was going down, and uh, most likely brought some comfort to even a few people. Very heroic. These are definitely a lot closer than uh, most other cemeteries. One of the most eerie things about being here is just all these gravestones and they all have the exact same date. Really puts it into perspective in some ways. So once the bodies were brought to Halifax, they were brought to a temporary morgue, which was the Mayflower Curling Rink. It made sense because of the ice, keeping, being able to keep the bodies cold, and also it was large enough. But some of those bodies then went to the real morgue, which was actually this building here. This building was built in 1817 as a schoolhouse. It changed hands a bunch of times, and then became the John Snow Mortuary. 
So I can't show you the Mayflower rink because that was destroyed in the Halifax explosion in 1917. But this building survived and actually played a key role in both disasters, the Titanic and the uh, Halifax explosion. Now, even though the building has been restored inside and out, the outside at least still resembles the original look, which is always a nice thing. Because it went through two huge disasters, the Halifax explosion of 1917, and an embalmed people from the Titanic disaster is believed to be very, very haunted, which is pretty creepy. Now, an interesting thing is Jon Snow, the owner of the mortuary, actually accompanied the crew on one of the ships, bringing body bags, caskets, and embalming fluid. So anyone who, who survived the Titanic sinking was picked up by the Carpathia and brought to New York. But any of the bodies found, any of the victims that were recovered were brought here to Halifax, Nova Scotia. And a lot of times those crew members picked up debris floating in the ocean from the ship. And this maritime museum behind me has a lot of those artifacts that are very interesting. And it also has the shoes that helped identify the unknown child that I told you about before. So I'm gonna go in here and check this out. Mm. So this is a newel post from uh, Titanic's grand staircase. That's incredible. This cabinetry is the only cabinetry that has that is known to have ever survived the Titanic disaster. Only this. Fully intact. So these are the little shoes to the unknown child. These are the ones that I was telling you about. So that's gonna do it for my Titanic in Halifax, Nova Scotia video. Hope you learned something maybe you didn't know. Hope you liked it. I'm gonna continue walking around the city, checking out everything it has to offer, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.